<laughs> I said it wrong. <laughs> German is really hard. I bet. It's a very hard language, you know, because it's the grammar. I mean, mm-hmm. we don't even get it right most really? of the time. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You're really organized, though. You, you know, I, I try, but I'm actually kind of bad. You've been in America too long. I know. <laughs> Seriously. When my mom would come over to visit, she's, she's like, what are we doing today? I'm like, oh, at 2 o'clock we'll go to the city, whatever. You know, okay. she's like, oh, so you mean at 4 o'clock. Right. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm just waiting for our data card. Sometimes it's really fast, okay. but should be in your That sounds uh, louder this week. Bitte. Um, the earphones. Oh. Yes, very fancy. <laughs> Can you guys um, talk in the mic for a second? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, it's loud. I know, right? <laughs> yes, very, hello. very loud tonight. Yeah. Oh, you can turn yourselves down in the middle. Your volume is right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm right here. Oh, yeah, Mark. Gotcha. So if I don't want to hear myself, I just do hello? that. <laughs> yeah, you can turn it down hello, to how hello. it suits you. Yeah. Yeah. If it's too loud, you're told. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? We're told. I still can't hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, Mark, could you just talk just a little bit more for me? Uh, testing one, two, testing one, two. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and roll. Okay. Rolling. All right. Welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on renegaderadio.com. Also, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, TuneIn, Radio Public, wherever you're listening to us, Apple Podcasts. Run it, run, iTunes run everywhere. It's the Dark Mark show. I'm Dark Mark, the goth comedian, and boy, this is gonna be a good one. This is you're all you're already singing, you're already excited. I'm already excited. <laughs> I, I'm here with uh, two Hollywood hyphenates. I like that. Well, you both do so much, and you both are uh, international beauties, international oh, talent. Thank you. I sh- shouldn't say that in a feminist. Yes. Yeah, we're in a feminist. Shouldn't say theater. that in a feminist theater, yes. but it's obvious. Yes, yes. Even the feminists know it's obvious. Uh, and there's more uh, women in this room than men, so there's that too. Uh huh. Yeah. But there usually is. There usually yeah. is. Oh, I, interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, honestly, I don't know. I think uh, a, a lot of times women are more interesting than men. You two yeah. are definitely more interesting than most men I know. Oh well, thank, why, thank you. By thank the way, you. that is uh, actress. Scream queen, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Host. Uh, former uh, Facebook Live host. Yes, you really did your research. No, you'd be, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, Vita Gafari. Yeah, you said it Ooh. wrong. Woo, I was so, did you see me? I was like, was, oh, I hope I get this no, right. No, but you said it great. You said it better than like a Persian doctor when they say, Vita Gafari, come into the office. Well, that's because <laughs> I, I just had my proctological exam today. But oh. that's, uh, that's all <laughs> that I'm saying. Yes, yes. You were uh, in Westwood for that, right? Yes, Dr. Gafari, yes. <laughs> and, uh, yes. and uh, 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 over to my left, I it, it's funny because I know I've seen you before. We don't know where from years ago. Yes. I ran into our other guest about a, a couple months ago. Hadn't seen you in years. I know. It's been a while. Yes, that was uh, since the uh, Club Hell days. Uh, yes. Yeah, all sorts of things. And you, uh, musician, mm-hmm. singer, songwriter, Sometimes actress, uh, a fashionista. You're a clothing designer. You're a motivational guru now. Ooh, well, there's all you sorts know. of things. No, no, because I, I, <laughs> I was on your YouTube page. That's a uh, Jacqueline von Bertz. Ooh, what a nice. Did I say that right? Von Birk. Von Birk. You said the like Persian name. name right. You said I the know, German right? name wrong. <laughs> I'm part German like too. It's Jacqueline <laughs> no. von Birk. Oh. Jacqueline, but I said Jacqueline Von Jacqueline. Bierks. You made her sound French. It's all about Jacqueline. <laughs> Jacqueline Von Bierks. Okay. Formerly the lead singer of Otto's Daughter yeah. and now going solo. Before we get started. Congrats. No, before we get started, we uh, have a couple sponsors. Audible is sponsoring the show. I know you guys are on the road a lot. Audiobooks. Yes. Now, here's the deal. We have a deal unprecedented. Like, nothing you've ever heard uh, they, they've offered before. Not only do you get any book, and they just came out with an exclusive, Mel B. from the Spice Girls. Her autobiography, is, uh, the audio por- portion is only on Audible. You can oh. get a Stephen King book. There's a play of Dracula with right. Tim Curry, Alan Cumming, and an all-star cast. Okay. Whatever you like. One book, Fifty Shades of Grey, whatever you want. Is that, 
Stupid stuff, whatever you want. So there's something you, you wanted to read. I don't know. Mein Kampf might be on there. I don't know what's on there. <laughs> I don't think she goes that way. I don't know, I don't know who would really be reading that, but uh, I doubt that's on there. Who knows? Maybe yes. Uh, but I, I, I kid. But whatever you like, and you get a book. But not only that, you get two Audible originals. One of them is Patti Smith, the spoken word show. Oh. That's you get cool. that free with your book. You can get Stephen Fry, the English comic. He does a whole thing about the gossip and uh, hijinks of Victorian England. Nice. You get that free. You get two of six Audible originals. Those are the two I would recommend, especially for, for, this, for this crowd. But you get a book, two Audible originals, 30-day free trial if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. I'm going to say it again, audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. Free book, two free Audible originals, and a 30-day trial. Also, one more sponsor, Dewey's Home Cooking. Are you vegan? I'd like to be, but I'm, you know, coming where I come from, I, I like kebab too much, so I'm right. yeah, sorry. But I'd like to be, are, sometimes. Are, are you vegan? Part-time vegan. That's right. We're, really? There is such a thing? We're talking about that. Well, if you go to Dewey's Home Cooking, you will be a part-time vegan, too. Then I will look into yeah. it. No, and when I say vegan, I mean Mexican food. Ooh. It's really good. I, I had like chicken it. flautas. Wow. The biggest flautas I've ever had. Did it taste like chicken? It does. Oh. The man is a genius. Pulled pork sandwiches. Really? Philly cheesesteaks. Big Macs on the secret menu. Normally it's like avocado toast with bread that has no, like... No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, look at this. Wait, wait a second. Look, what do you see this? You, you, I don't know if you've ever heard of the uh, Industrial Club Das Bunker. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. They have Das Baker bake stuff like this. Oh, that's, oh <laughs> wow. That looks like a chocolate brownie or And that is, and that's 100% vegan. Ooh, there and, it it is. and it's even better it's than the real so thing, good. right? It, you know, I, it's just as good as the real thing. I don't know. It, it's, I, had, I put, took my parents there. I had a shrimp po' oh boy. Nice. Entirely vegan, delicious. You know, it's funny you should mention that because I go to a Chinese, what is? what do they call themselves, medical people. They're Chinese oh, yeah, yeah. herbalists. Oh, yeah, herbalists. And he's like, let me see a tongue. And he's like, you know, too much dairy. So, you know, sometimes right. I think about it. Well, there's two locations. 16, well, there's actually three because they have one in Toronto, too. So all of our Canadian listeners. Oh. But if you're ever in L.A., 1253 Vine Street, Hollywood, California, where the M Bar used to be. Mm. That's one. Just opened Culver City. 4140 City Terrace Drive in Culver City. We missed the free Thanksgiving dinner, but you can go there and get Doomy Some Cooking. Their next Mex is open. You can get a delicious brownie, whatever you would like. Wow, they're taking Ooh. over LA. They are. Yeah, they're yeah, great. They got to open really a Sherman Oaks location. For yes. Valley they, people. They, yes. They might be. North Hollywood. That's where I'm from. Are you oh, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm oh. around Valley Village. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, well, we're all in. For neighbors. All. Yes. We should have done this in the valley. I know. I know. <laughs> Come to the big city. Yeah, because I'm in Tarzana. We could have just, oh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. met Van Nuys or something. But yeah. anyway, Rita, I, um, you were recommended by your agent. Thank you. Big shout out to the big fabulous Joe Williamson. The fabulous Joe Williamson, you were recommended. We had your co star in the movie Robo Woman. Uh, yes. Madonna. Yes, the lovely Donna Lee Heising, who is Heising. outstanding as the lead in Robo Woman. I've had the honor of working with her before. She's incredible. Now, she's Robo Woman. What do you play? I play a very sinister woman without giving too much away. I'm the assistant to the evil scientist, uh -huh. who is played by legendary actor Mel Novak, who was in Bruce Lee's Game of Death, Chuck oh, Norris's yeah. Eye for an Eye. He's like a legendary oh, wow. villain actor. Right. And he was in Steve McQueen's Tom Horn. I mean, like, his IMDb goes on and on. But I was, like, his, you know, crony, his evil assistant. And he was an evil doctor, like a mad scientist. Well, speaking of evil, I, I was I read that you grew up in Washington, the Washington, D.C. area. Yes, right? that's, like, the center <laughs> of all evil. Right, right. And uh, is, it, is it true that your, your parents were diplomats? Is that... My dad could have been a diplomat, but he chose to be a scientist, but not an evil one. Okay. My dad worked for NASA. So, okay, so, yeah. you, you, so, so did you... So this is like type typecasting. Uh, kind the of. It's interesting. The scientist, yeah. yeah, it's this is the second time I'm playing a scientist. I was a scientist in another film, and in uh, Middle Eastern culture, being a scientist is like being like Michael Jordan. Really. So they really respect it. They have a lot of like admiration for it, or like being I don't know, um, I don't know, like uh, Michael say. Jackson, or I don't know, like a big. Well, I'm, that's a dated reference. It's like right. Beyonce. Right. So um, that's it, a dated reference too. But, uh, yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> 
so what do I Taylor say? Taylor Swift. Yeah. Taylor Swift. Ariana Grande. There you there go. Right. Okay, there it's like being Ariana Grande. It's like being a cute 20-year-old right, girl right. that gets everything handed to her. Right. But, uh, so... Except you don't have to go out with Pete Davidson. That's the... Yeah, yeah. I'm not really a fan of his. But, um... <laughs> He said that mean thing to one of our troops. Oh, I, did, I, I don't follow him. Go ahead. I'm, uh, well, I'm more interested in you. It was all over the, it was uh, all over the meme. Fuck Pete Davidson. What, what about you? <laughs> well, um, it, like I said, in those cultures, being a scientist is really revered. So um, when I played the scientist in another film, The Bayans, uh, it hit all the Persian uh, media newspapers. And yeah. usually they write about like intellectual things. But it was uh, they're like, you know, daughter of so-and-so. And then in one of them, they didn't even mention my dad. Right. And a friend of my dad's was like, you know, they didn't mention your dad because he was so smart. And I was like, and people like figured it out already. I was like, that's interesting. So right. it's it's funny, like, uh, you know. So I'm, he's the superstar of the family. My dad was definitely the superstar. And I'll tell you something funny. I, my family followed me out to California. And I had an agent at the time. And she's like, "There's this was years ago. And she's like, there's this show where they're looking for funny senior citizens. And your dad would be perfect because he's <laughs> over 100. He lived to be over 100. And he's an ethnic so right. he'd be perfect, and I'm like, my one dad. One of those ethnics, yeah. One of those ethnics. So she was a New York lady, and it was uh, Betty White's Off Their Rockers. And I was like, mm -hmm. Dad, just go for the fun of it. He's like, no. <laughs> I don't want to. Right. And then I'm like, he's over 100, and he, he doesn't think, he, I didn't want to be rude, and she wouldn't leave him alone. And she's like, you know, the casting people are really interested. How many 100-year-old ethnics do you have? He's over 100, and he's got special skills, because he speaks like three or four, he spoke three or four sure. languages. And I was like, you know, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. And then they were filming a big campaign. I think it was for Tylenol, and they wanted elderly people that had no ailments. And I don't know how they found my dad. Like right. some big ad agency in New York called us, and they're like, oh, well, you know, well, what's your mom like? I'm like, my mom is younger. Oh. And I'm, I'm, and then neither one of them was interested. And it was a really, it was so like how, a how much, how much, how much younger? My mom is like in her 70s now. My, my oh, parents wow. had a okay. big age. It was like an arranged marriage. Uh, but it's funny, my dad was the one that would always like flirt with like diner waitresses and like his secretaries. People always thought, oh, your mother is so much younger. And it, yeah. was, it was like the other way around because, you know, that's like a male dominated society. As we're in a feminist theater, I'm saying. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, I mean, I, that's, that's the way. Well, uh, so he, he grew up in Iran. He grew up in Iran, and he left when he was like sixteen. He studied abroad in Europe. Oh, okay. So, so, and uh, so, and you grew up, as I said, you grew up in Washington D.C. Now, born and raised in D.C. Thank God I don't ever tear on Iran on my passport. That would yeah. like in this administration not to be political. Right. That'd be very scary. I'm very grateful yeah. every day. And so, but anyway, so you, obviously your father's a superstar of the family. Yes. But how did you uh, get the acting bug? You know, it's funny. I come from a long line, besides my dad, of uh, artists mostly painters. My mom was an artist. A lot of my ancestors were artists, uh, artists, artisans, sculptors. Right. So there was that in my family. There was also a lot of diplomats. I come from a very large and very old Persian family. But yeah, one of them was like a, one of my great uncles was like the guy that would draw all the portraits of the king of Iran at the time. Oh, really? Wow. So yeah, yeah. And he, at the end of his life, he like lost his eye in a duel. He was trying to stop a duel. And it was a very dramatic life. And my dad was a little, my dad was so elderly, he was a little boy when this great, great uncle was around. And he's like, you know, that guy, he led a really tragic life. He was an artist. Do you really want to go that path? But, but this you don't is, want to lose an eye. God forbid. <laughs> but Hollywood will take an eye. It'll take everything. It'll take your eyes, your kidneys, your, your soul. teeth, your soul. <laughs> what little bit of a heart you have left. So, um, it, but he's like, you know, I originally started out as a journalist, and he's like, well, it's better than being a journalist, because at least when you're a journalist, you're, you're standing out in the cold wanting to interview people. Right. So he's like, at least you're like, you know, at least that's different. You get to play a character, but he's like, God, you know, it's you always see the successful people. You don't see the people that are, like, trying hard every day. He's very practical. Yeah, except on the Dark March show. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Yeah. So, yeah, it's funny. I was approached to do something about my dad in, in Iran, but with you know, all the restrictions and everything and the fact that Persian Tuman and American dollars is nothing, right. I kind of forego that uh, idea. But it's funny, when I first started out, I'd play like, a, I call it the hijab. I was a hijab actress. Yeah, no, I, I've seen a couple of those. Yeah. I, I didn't see it, you were a hijab Yes, actress. I was a hijab actress. And the, uh, the guy that played my husband, Max Amini, is now a very successful comic. So, you know, right. good for him. I don't know if you know him, Max I, I, I know of him. I've yeah, yeah. Him. Oh, he's a, he's a great guy. Yeah. He's from my hometown. And... Then I did. So the, mind them and see. They uh, so they finally uh, finally get a, a a racially balanced show, and they have you in the in the hubby. Uh, 
And then in the, in the veil, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a uh, deal. It was at the time they had, and I'm dating myself, deal or no deal, and it's right. deal or we kill your family. Well, mine have been sealed. That dates it just, just Carlos Benzia dates it right there. But. Yeah, that was my first TV credit was right. Comedy Central. And then I, on the Mindy Project, I played it. And it's funny, we it was the pilot, and we had this British director, and he directed the pilots of big shows like Sex and the City, so they treated him like a king. Right. He wasn't treated like a regular TV treated director. like a father. Treated well, probably, well, yeah, my dad was treated really well, but yeah. uh, a <laughs> good one. But uh, he was a like, he's like, I want I want her, and he pointed to me, I want her to be in a full-on burqa. And then the uh, costume designer that I never met at the, mm -hmm. at the time was Persian, and she went on to do, like, the Virgin Suicides right. and all these big, you know, Sofia Coppola movies. And she's like, no, she was Persian. She's like, no, uh, I will not allow her to be in a burqa because that's Afghanistan. Right. That's not Iran. Wow. And then people, women in Iran, this is a modern woman in America. Why are you putting her in a full black hijab with a coat? Right. They, she brought, she had like a whole book she put together of Persian women, like, you know, they all have like blonde hair. And they have like a bouffant hairdo, and then they put the veil on top. And he's like, no way. I want her to be a traditional woman. And she's like, that's what traditional women are. They're fighting right. for their rights. She walked off the set, and then I was left with like three young blonde assistants from the Midwest and they were trying to cover me up, and they're like, we finally got it right, you have to wear this during lunchtime. And I remember it was so humiliating for me to be on the Universal backlog. Wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second. I can understand for the show as a character. They made you wear it at lunch? Because they didn't want to unwrap and rewrap me. Wow, that's messed up. Yeah, that was messed up, and it was a very warm spring day, and I just, like, I, like I was treated like, because you know, people, when you're on the Universal lot, there's people dressed like showgirls. I mean, right. I could yeah. be an actor, yeah. but it was very scary, and I felt like the sad little girl that nobody wants to sit Aww. next to in the cafeteria. <laughs> it was very sad. Right. So, and I, when I was a hijab actress, I had to. God, that sounds like that should be like the first line of my right. memoirs. When I was a hijab actress, you have to like use your eyes a lot. Mm -hmm. And one thing I noticed is they cut your lines a lot because women from those cultures aren't right. supposed to talk. So that was very like challenging for me. Yeah, it's just a close up of you. Just... Yeah, so now that I have yeah. lines, I'm like, oh my God, I have so many lines. I'm used <laughs> to like saying a few things that are profound about like my village or something, or right. my husband or my child or whatever. And then like, you know, you there's a close up on my eyes with a little hijab thing. Mm -hmm. But I can't really work that anymore because I don't play those things anymore. So yeah, you're right. I made the transition from comedy to other things and, 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 and hijab to non-hijab that's good that's good yeah to laugh and what a beautiful face why would anybody want to oh cover thank it up? you but you know it's very good to work the hijab i'll, I'll, I'll yeah I'll, yeah I'll, I'll take i had my that. i had like my hints of, like i had like seductive hijab lady but I not only that you, you can play lady. you can play other ethnicities yes and i've been getting that thank goodness lately too right you play any of this. Yeah, with them. I think it's like when you first... You've got kind of like a Paula Abdul kind of like, what the fuck is it? Oh, I don't know. I love Paula yeah. Abdul. I wish I could sing like her or you, yeah. or, you yeah. know. Yeah. So anyway, I, like a Mariah Carey, like I don't know what the fuck she is, whatever. Wow, but, if uh, I had that voice. Yeah, well, speaking of great voices, here, here she is. Yes. Jacqueline. Aww, no, you. Jacqueline. <laughs> Jacqueline. Now, what, what is the town in Germany where you grew up? It's a very small town. It's maybe 5,000 people left in there. Really? I call it my little shit town. Your little it's, shit town. It's really cute, but this is really boring. Well, what's what's it called? Loops. 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 Loops, Germany. The biggest thing we actually have a brewery, believe it or not. Ooh. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Germany. It's Germany. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's how do you spell How do you spell Loops? It's L U umlaut B Z, like yeah. Loops. I was hoping there would be an umlaut. It's in Mecklenburg. <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah. very metal. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a really cute town. If, if like people from America go there from a big town, they're like, oh my God, it's so cute. It's like, you know, a little fairy tale town. Is it near Aww. Munich or Berlin? Or it's near Hamburg. Hamburg, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, so when people say where are you from, I'm like from Hamburg, because it's easier. Yeah. It's just, Can you just say a suburb of Hamburg? Is it a suburb? No, it's actually two hours away from Hamburg. Oh. It's, it's still so it's like a, Germany's that big. There's fields. It's and... not that big, but like from my town to Munich, it's about eight hours with wow. a car. Like, so it's about, Probably like 14, 15 hours so from one so from the very. On it does, yeah. So there's like fields. It's like and, Texas. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, it's like yeah. a small town. Yeah. So you. Oh, there's like a lot of woods. Yeah. It's a lot of land. Right. Gardens. And old people. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> I, I thought, yeah, I thought Lucy would be like all <laughs> hot young people. Now, how did you... There's still some young people. You, you must, you must but have, there's not much work, you know. It's just, I mean, it's 
I bet everybody's like blonde and they wear the no, they're not. outfits you guys wear during no, the No, they don't. Know. No, that's the southern part. That's what Bavaria. about bratwurst? That's Bavaria, but bratwurst is very yeah, yeah. especially for Christmas. So only in Bavaria they wear those outfits. Yeah, mainly they're more Whoa. traditional. The northern part is not traditional. Oh, okay. Yeah. So where you were was very traditional. Very right? non-traditional. Non-traditional. Yeah. Okay. So no later hosen for you with the little pigtails. No, no later hosen. But for carnival, we do that. Oh, yeah. that's yes. cute. I used to be like in little carnival troops. So we yes, I, I, I'm picturing that right now. <laughs> oh, I bet he's loving that. <laughs> so, 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 Next to so me in you, the hijab. Did you always want to go? <laughs> did you always want to go to America? Did you since you were? You a little know, girl? I just knew like when I was a little girl, I'm like, this cannot be it. Like, I need to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to Los Angeles. Loops, not it. <laughs> I just wanted to be in a big town. Right. So I was like, if I could just be in Berlin, you know, that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, and then I met a friend. I, I ended up in Hanover, and I met a friend, and we were like, let's go to New York. Yeah. Yeah. And I know. You, it, 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 New York was a stop was over it. New York. Yes. Yeah, a stop over New York. New York. Yeah. And, and New York was it. You know, that was kind of like. You were a teenager? Love at first. Yeah. Teenager. Yeah. Love at wow. first sight. Yes. I was like, this is it. I'm home. Yeah. This does my home. New York or just yeah. the United States? New York. Okay. And how was it in New York? I mean, it's... Uh... It was awesome at the time I was there. You know, I was really green, and I did all the things I never got to do in Germany. Yeah. Party uh, a lot. <laughs> yes. Got out of your system. Party a lot, and, you know, just see the world more, and, and right. different cultures, which mm -hmm. I, you know, my town was just German people. Oh, right, You know, right. we didn't have any multicultural things that right. there, you know. And was that, was that a shock? Like, you go from <laughs> no, a small town in Germany? I loved it. I, I, I was craving that. I just wanted, to you know, To the diversity. biggest belty pot in the world. Oh, it was so awesome. The first few nights we stayed actually like on 42nd Street, like near 42nd Street, like a block away. It's, it's, always, just, it's always the 42nd Street. Always 42nd Street. It is. You have to be there. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those. Street. And, 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 it's the, nothing like it is anymore now. But, yeah. You know. Oh, so you were back, back then yeah, on 42nd like Street. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like porn theater. It was, it, some of that was still there. Not Crack all of it, but yeah. Oh, late 90s. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But it was still, you know, some of it was still there. Seedy underworld. Yeah, yeah. like very New York, you know. It's just funny because everybody's like, oh, New York is all Disneyland. I'm like. No, go a block over. It's not Disneyland. Yeah. It, it, it's still there. I mean, it's cleaned up a lot, you know, yeah. over the past it's very 15, pricey. 20 years. Yeah, but, it, yeah. but it, 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 trust me, the, the old New York is right around the corner from the Lion King. Trust ah. me. <laughs> All you gotta do, every time you go to New York, you're like, eh, it's Disneyland. I'm like, no, nah, there's some shitholes down here. Trust yeah. me. I, yeah. There's a crackhead sitting a, a block away. Don't exactly. worry about it. Yeah. But, it's still there. So, yeah, late 90s, which was... The golden age of industrial music. I know. Yeah. yeah. And that's when you formed Otto's Daughter. Was that yeah. in New York or L.A.? In New York. Okay. Yeah, in like 1999. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. so long ago. So like long the ago. song. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You thought the year old was going to end, mm -hmm. so why not start a band? You know, I was auditioning for bands, and I could never find a band. Everybody wanted a singer that sounds like somebody. Oh, yeah. Especially and I was like, like that. you know, and I'm like, I don't, that they already exist. So yeah. that, that's no point. Starting the right. band, you know, so I. And were they looking for male singers or female singers? I definitely had a lot of bands. So like, oh, I don't know about a female singer, you know, like oh, I don't know. Yeah. It was really. You look weird. like a lead singer, though. You've got thank that you. look to you. You've got the thank star you. quality. Yeah. Thank you. Always have. So I thank you. So I started writing my own stuff. You know, yeah. With my back then drummer, mm -hmm. I was like, let's make a band. Actually, it was just a project, and we didn't know what we were doing. We met this guy at the laundromat, and he's like. What are you doing? Oh, we're making music, going to producers, paying a lot of money for making songs. Mm. Right. And a washing clothes. And what? There's washing clothes, I would imagine, too. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, I do computers, so I can build your computer and show you how to nice. do your own thing. So we didn't really know. Where's this guy? I need a computer. Yeah. We didn't know shit. Late you know 90s. I mean? like, yeah. We were just kind of learning as we were going along. and that's how we started Are you the songs. only German in it? Yes, I was oh. doing German and yeah. And and Otto's daughter became um, now who's Otto? Otto was my dad. Okay, because I, oh, I was going to ask you. And I'm sure everybody's asked you that. I just I I know, yeah, yeah. such a hack question, but I had a to ask. A few people asked me if that was from The Simpsons. I never even watched The Simpsons, so I'm like, who? The bus Is there an Otto? Okay. I guess. So I'm like, mm, definitely not. But so your father's Otto. <laughs> my father was Otto, and he was this grumpy saxophone player, you know. Love oh, it. so you come from musicians. He was in a band and he played the drums and sang and played saxophone. And so he was he like did cover songs. He did it like he was a party. Oh, band. that's lovely. Yeah. So he's he the biggest rock like star in, in your small town. He was a rock star in my small town. Yeah. Yeah. He would have a day job and then he would go on the weekends and play, you know, shows with his band. Wow, it sounds like yeah. a great indie film. Your life. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is, it is interesting. Yes. Yes. So, I, I can see the collaboration over here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, but so, and in um, New York, uh, that's when all those. Started. And then, when did you get to LA? Two thousand three. Okay. Mm. And had you already come out, put out yeah, an album? Of Fields, so ago. Yes, um, I put out two albums between that. Right. The first and one was just like the that experiment kind of thing, mm -hmm. and then the second one. Um, we worked actually, actually with this producer, Neil Kernan. He worked with like a bunch of industrial bands. Yeah, yeah, at the yeah. Time. No, he's, he's a big name. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he mixed it. So we right. had El Paso to have it mixed. And then. El Paso, Texas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which that reminded, was cool. you, reminded you a little bit of Germany because it's, it's a no, lot of wide was, open spaces. It was cool. It yeah. was really cool, you know? And the food was good. Yeah. I was like, this chef. Food, oh, yeah. Food, like all these Mexicans. Because you never have. I mean, <laughs> I never, tax them out. No, not authentic. Not authentic. There, there's Mexican no Mexican food, food in Germany. Yet. No, yeah. no. I mean, now that maybe it's, but yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. We got <laughs> yeah, there. yeah. So but, yeah, we had two albums, and then we came out of here, and I came with half of the band, because I was like, I need to go to LA. I don't know why. I just, I have to go. You keep doing this. I know. You well, wanted I nice weather. For a while. Yeah. So yeah, half the band came. So we be actually the first show I played in LA was at the Rainbow Bar and Grill. Right. Doing an acoustic show. That seems to happen. You know, I was like, oh, I don't have a full band, so yeah. my guitarist and I was just like, let's just play some songs and see And how'd that happens. go over? It was pretty fun. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. But you, eventually you got a lot and of... And then we put a new lineup together and... And that's the lineup that got a lot of song, uh, songs on yes. a lot of movies and TV, because mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no music industry anymore. No, there isn't, unfortunately. Right. And, and I'm going to get to... I'm going to... Because I was shuffling between Aldo's Daughter and your solo stuff, and we're going to mm -hmm. get to that in a second. Okay. There's a contrast. But... Uh, <laughs> So, but you were on the Vampire Diaries. What other shows? Awesome. That was a promo for Vampire Diaries, Melrose Place. Um, Melrose Place. Gossip Girl. Like all, all the, the hot, hot shows. One Tree Hill. Yeah. But it was just all the promos, you know. Yeah. So, so the, but the, the entire that was the entire EP we recorded here. Right. With that guy Brian Carlstrom, he did like The Offspring, and um, right. he was he was amazing. And so, and, and was he the, the, the how you got those songs on the TV show? No, or? I actually I did that. I sent it out to some people and. Yeah. Good for you, yeah. girl. Yeah. And so, the, and that's, uh, and then what happened? And all those daughter, uh, trust me, in the industrial scene, very hot. Mm, I can imagine. Very, that. very hot. Did a lot of touring. We did the U.S. Yeah, we now did. Did, did the, you yeah. ever tour, go back to Germany touring? You know, we did some acoustic shows in Germany, like yeah. well, electric guitar acoustic shows. Right. A few, and they loved it. And it was funny because I told Jim at the time. <laughs> is that is that because of visa problems? Because for the rest of the band or? Well, I was going on vacation, and I was like, yeah. why, why not book a few shows? Like, Jim always yeah. hated that, but I'm like, I cannot. Because we love what we do, right? It's, not, yes, it's never you work want, for you me. You want to do it yeah. everywhere. It's never work. Yeah. I'm like, I just you want to book share some shows and play, you know? Right. And so I was like, you play acoustic guitar, and I'll just put like a little dance beat behind it, and the mm -hmm. Germans love that. You give them like oh, a little yeah. oomph, 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 yes. and they love it. <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun. No, I love German industrial. That's all. Yeah. But you're still, you still got kind of got that beef. I still love. I mean, I love electronic music. I love Rammstein. That's my favorite right. German band. Yeah. Um, you know, I love. I, you know, it's weird. I my favorite belt band in the world. But you understand the hair. words. I do. I do. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'd be, it'd be great to listen to the yeah. Rammstein and understand it's, the words. It's, it's great. You love You love. Yeah. You love metal. You love industrial. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've seen you live, and it was, it was, it was great. Now, did you play the small town that you, you came from? I did not play there, but I played the bigger town near our town, and, it, it, and that it, was fun. And did the rest of the, your your uh... my mom was just like, oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> she's never seen me play. You know, she's like you're wild. <laughs> you're wild. <laughs> mom, like, don't you remember? <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, I'm your child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, but we're you're coming back opposite. home right now. <laughs> you're too wild. Yeah. That's she great. She did not like my music at first at all, right. and she did not like me doing the stage blood and all she's like why do you have to do that why can't you just look pretty you know oh. i'm like i am pretty like no you are you i know. was trying to be really shocking and then guys would come up you so hot i'm like dude i'm covered in blood and like what's wrong with you for some guys i'm sure that's a <laughs> know, thing right? you know guys yeah it's fun it's nothing, like no, nothing's yeah <laughs> yes You'd be surprised. We played yeah. a lot of those. Shows you had to, yeah, you had to go to shows. Club Hell. It was, it was especially it was like in it was Germany. Brilliant. Where is Club Hell in Hollywood? In Hollywood. Oh yeah, but uh, no, that, that's where we met. And they had. Like, did we meet there? We, did we play a show? You, yeah. I, I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you all the time at Bar Sinister. I'm all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I've seen you. I've seen you play, 
And I've seen you, uh, I don't know if it's Bar Sinister or some other place, but I know I've seen you play. That was probably already without the blood, though. And I remember, I, I don't think I've ever seen the blood, yeah. just trust me. That, that was back be, in New York, yeah. That'd be too much for me, but uh, <laughs> but she must love what you're doing now. But I'm going to tell you that you have, you're going through a transition. You're going through, through a transition in that you you started out Mind of Mencia. Yes. Uh, Mindy Project. Yeah. You did a little stand-up. You did Very some Very brief career, not like you, sir. No, well. It's a long and it's hard, arduous no? career. Yes. Well, yes. show business. We're both we're three show business survivors. We're still a lot of people have no idea who we are, and who knows if they ever will. But we're three people that are dedicated to the to doing what we love. But I feel like in our niches we're known, yeah. like in your German niche and your comedy. You know, when you have your makeup on niche mm -hmm. and my little Persian niche. Yeah. Well, I'm saying in the mainstream. If uh, if. Oh you, right, you know, right. But. I think in L.A. we are known, but you and you're known for your celebrity interviews. Yeah, but you know, I got to tell you, I had a really good. Speaking of transitions, I was in a movie uh, that was featured in Variety. Okay. And it was over the summer, and that really helped. And the name of the movie was Advance. It stars uh, Richard Tyson, Billy Worth, again the wonderful, mm -hmm. fabulous Mel Novak. Jan Birch, Scout Taylor Compton from Halloween. Is Mel Novak stalking you? What's going on? He's not uh, well, we have the movies. same wonderful representation. <laughs> ah, okay. I gotta, get, so, I gotta get together with his agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The same wonderful manager. So uh, that was just like an amazing experience to work with those amazing actors. The director Harley Wallen was outstanding. His lovely wife Katie was amazing. So, and it was just we shot on location in Michigan, and that was just working with people like Richard Tyson and Mel and Jan yeah. and all of them. It's like. It really is an interesting experience as an artist. Yeah. And then after that, like, you know, more doors opened, and then that got me into, like, the Persian media. And I'm currently guest hosting on a really popular Persian show on their number one network, ATV Andy Shan. And they have millions of viewers worldwide. So that's been a great Now, ride. do they make you wear that? No. No, it's I don't based know. in I don't Woodland know. Hills. It's an international. <laughs> I think it's broadcast everywhere including Iran, believe it or not, and I don't know how they do it. I guess they they go through the satellites or something. I don't know how they, they right. finagle it, but they do. So people in Iran are watching you in Woodland Hills. People in Iran are watching me in Woodland Hills, and the funny part is my, my parents are both from Tehran, but ancestrally my mom's side of the family is from northern Tehran, and my mm -hmm. dad's side of the family is from a city called Kashan. And apparently every time I'm on this show, like relatives call or email us, and they're like, your daughter's on the show with the yeah. Susie lady, and uh, just wanted to let you know yeah. her farce is getting better. <laughs> sometimes we do it in English, sometimes we do it in farce. Oh, okay. That's yeah. kind of cool. No, I've seen you. I've seen Super your cool. YouTube page. I've seen you interview people in, in English and farce. Yes, and I was. I, it's funny because it's a homecoming for me because I used to be there, a red carpet reporter for like movie premieres. Right, right. And I saw you, my favorite because you're so, you're just so positive. Thank you. You're I so try un, to be so unlike me. You're so positive. You're like. My favorite one, there's two, my two favorites, when, when you interviewed Martin Short. Oh my God, I, like, I love you're him. You're so amazing. This is an amazing movie. Your, your performance is amazing. What do you think about it? He's like, I got a word for it. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> what, you, what you guys with don't that see. With that perfect timing. Exactly, with his perfect timing. What you guys don't see is when I'm standing in the press line, when I was with Persian TV, I was usually at the end of the press line. And, right. you know, everybody, the, all the producers from Extra and ET are always motioning to people like Martin Short. So I got to get their attention somehow. You How's know? he doing? Because I kept saying how amazing he was. Oh, okay. So, like, I, oh, like you know, I was like... I so was he's an egomaniac, basically. Not him, but, like, I'm saying is, like, you know... The, and he other, can be. He's very talented. He's other great. people are, There's, like, hordes of people back there trying to get their attention. Yeah. So... It was very challenging for me, and I would sometimes I'd be like by a bush right. or by like the railing, and they wouldn't put me in like the best spot. So you really had to like work for it. Eventually, you get to meet more people, and the press people, and the PR mm -hmm. people are like, "Here, we'll move you closer to extra." Right. But you know, it's like w when you're starting out, you really want to like, "Hey, no, I know. What's the question?" You know. Yeah. And, and so you realize if I ever run into Martin Short in a restaurant or on the street. I'm going to, hey, you're amazing. Yes. So amazing. Yes. <laughs> Just yes. trying to get his attention. <laughs> and my other favorite was, and I don't even, it's like Rammstein. I didn't even understand it, but you interviewed the Iron Sheik in Farsi. That yes, was I did. The wrestler. Yes, I did. I, I did, and I actually went to his roast at the comedy store. Yeah, he, was, seemed, he seemed to be... Uh, just as insane and farcy as he was, isn't it? Yes, and you know he's he's a lovely man. I don't know if you saw the documentary, and we spoke mm -hmm. later. And farcy, he had a family tragedy. He lost his daughter. Right. He's oh wow! Really been through a lot. You never know. Yeah. You never know. Well, no, you know. 
Now, you know, now you know. You know, yeah. he's, well, he's, he's a little crazy. We, he's we a little know kooky. Something's happened. Something, yeah, 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 Something yeah. has happened in his life. But you started out doing comedies. Yes. And now you're doing mainly horror movies. I do a lot of horror movies. Uh, lately, I've... The, the, is, is, is this intentional? Is this... I think it's is just... your agent? Is yes, it's something? having representation that believes in you. And I'm like, you know, I'm used to doing stuff with an accent. It's like, you, so you, I, you, it's like, you're a better screamer than you are, Joe Teller. Let's try to get you in the song. I guess so, yeah. In the, I'm, I'm very good at being scared. Yeah. I'm always very scared. Yeah. I'm a very nervous, <laughs> uppity woman. Are you really? Yes, I'm a very nervous... When was the last time you were really scared in your real life? I just, I had like a very scary dream last night. I'm oh. on allergy meds, so I had oh, okay. very frightening. I get frightening dreams. All, just being on these sets, hearing about your blood, is just scary to me. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing Donna, like in her transition in Robo Woman was scary to me. You know, everything is scary. Even yeah. if it's fake, I get scared. I, I get it, yeah. I, I, saw, I, saw the, I saw the trailer, but I got to see the, the whole transition. But there was, a, there was a movie you were in last year that you got a lot of attention for. Uh, I'm trying to think the name of it. Holy Terror? Oh, Holy Terror. Oh, yeah, that was really something. That was really something. <laughs> and I have, I was, I was meaning to watch I didn't have a chance this week. How scary is that? It was very scary because we had to film a scene in a church basement, and I and we didn't want the church people to know that I, I was getting exercise. Yeah, they call her the Persian Linda Blair. <laughs> yeah, for that one, that really helped. And uh, what happened, I think those kinds of things go on satellite, so people would see snippets of it in the right. Middle East. And it would get like dubbed and stuff, which was very cool. But with that film, um, they were having their like Christmas parade, so, like rehearsals upstairs. So like I was being like exercised and thrashed in the basement <laughs> while they were. It was very funny. It was, uh, scary but funny. Right. But yeah, it was it was a great experience. And once again, I work with the amazing Mel Novak, the lovely Christine DeBell from Meatballs and The Big Brawl. She's a mm -hmm. really renowned actress as well. So that was great. I did another horror this year again. With the amazing Dustin Ferguson directing Runaway Nightmare, which was based on after school specials, and again, the lovely Donna Lee Heising right. is in it as well. Oh, so, okay. big ensemble cast. But I, my heart really lies with the Bayance and Robo Woman, uh, and not just because Donna's in it and Mal's in, in, in it, right. but uh, also we have in, in Robo Woman, we have Brink Stevens, who's the ultimate scream queen. Right. We have uh, Sue Price, who's in the Nemesis uh, 2 to 5 mm -hmm. franchise. Right. Uh, great actress, Aki Alion, who's a legendary Asian American actor. He mm -hmm. was in V, he was in all sorts of shows and movies, just a, and, and very, uh, a real. Uh, well, you just had me at the concept of, uh, yeah, the, just. Uh, Robocop, but it's a, it's a beautiful woman. You got me. Yeah, it's a beautiful woman. It's, 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 a, it's a retribution film. It's a sci-fi right. thriller. It's an action film. It's a, and we're in the feminist theater. It's a women's empowerment film without giving too much right. away. And, and Dustin I should have never told you it was a feminist theater. I, just... I can kind of tell. <laughs> I see like 20 women outside. No, what, that's but, kind of a but the, but the bathroom, uh, how, how And how there's 20 that? women outside, and they're not dressed to the nines <laughs> in Hollywood. Yeah. You know, they're not, they don't have their sashes. With all due respect right. to beauty queens like Donna. It's like 20 women that are, you know, dressed like improvisers. Yeah, I hate to sidebar like this, but when this was the Nerdist, people weren't amazed in the bathroom. People come out of the bathroom, they're like, oh my, that's, the, it's amazing. You know, just, it's, first off, it's clean. Oh, yeah, it's very clean. I don't know if it was clean was the Nerdist. And then, no, no, you're right. This and is the, the tampons theater. and the whole thing. It's and, the cleanest theater bathroom I've ever been in. Yes, so. People, More than people, UCB. Yeah, people go go crazy for, for the bathroom. Yeah, it was pretty clean. I was like surprised <laughs> for a minute, but then I realized who runs the theater. And, and of course, uh, this the, this podcast studio does doubles the lactating station, but I don't know no, if that's ever actually Yeah, done. but I don't know if people actually do that. I they're more than welcome to, but yeah. uh, so so I mean, are you you were you were featured in uh, Scare LA? You were yes. signing autographs there. How did that work out? It was wonderful. You know, my attorney, Nadia Davari, is the attorney for Scare LA. Ah. So I also did a panel with her. Well, it's not really a panel. I moderated, like, a Q&A session with her. Okay. So, and I was also at Scare LA. And right. It was, a, it was a great experience. It's the first convention that kicks off the Halloween season. Right. It's in the summer. It's a horror convention. Yeah, yeah. And, and Laura, the gal that started it, she's, I think she's German or Eastern European or something. Mm -hmm. Laura Ivanova right. uh, talking about women that are extraordinary. She started Scare LA and she's an entrepreneur. She has nothing to do with horror or filmmaking or producing and she just wanted to start this. Right. And she did. No, so I, I, I love it. Yes. I was there a couple of years ago and I, I probably go, I, I, might, I might, who knows, I might panel next year. Who knows? Yeah, who knows totally. I know a lot of people there. 
But I mean, did people recognize you? Did people you sell a lot of merch? Or yeah, it actually was. It, they did because those are those kinds of people are the true horror fans. They, yeah. It's not just the big blockbusters. They see the indie films. It yeah. was an interesting experience for so me. So the Persian Linda Blair, they did the words getting out. Yeah, yeah, and then someone is like, you should take a picture near the Linda Blair statue yeah. because you're the Persian Linda Blair, and I'm like. Isn't that a little bit much? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and, 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 and in Iran, what did you think? Uh, I, I got it. In Iran, what did you think of the, uh, the Persian Linda Blair? Are they uh, embracing that? You know, Iranian people love horror films, believe yeah. it or not. They're starting to make a couple of their own. Yeah, the human films. beings, yes, I understand. Yeah, no, 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 but they really <laughs> love horror. Like, like, I guess Asian people love horror films. Mm -hmm. They're fanatical about it, but I think a couple of their films even went to Sundance. But right. it never really goes very far because a lot of people don't watch subtitled movies. Right. Mm. So yeah. it's interesting. It's it's weird that my movie is probably, people probably see it in Iran, but here they watch Iranian movies. Like the Iranian community right. watches Iranian movies from Iran. So right. it's mm. interesting. And it's, have you been in any Iranian movies? Not recently, no. Okay. But I like the oldies. Okay. I like the old retro. Right. Like well, well, it's funny because that's, that's, that's changing too. A lot of people are, are watching stuff. Yeah, yeah, Taste of Cherry, like those kinds of movies. Right. right. So the, the horror movies are too scary, Persian yeah. movies. I get scared. A Taste of Cherry? <laughs> that's a Persian movie? Yeah, it's a, pa a Persian movie by this guy. He was the head of the jury of Cannes. His name was Abbas Kiarostami. When I was a journalist, I interviewed him. We lost him a few years ago. But he was a big deal. He ran the whole jury at Cannes. Oh, wow. Yeah, Juliette Binoche was in one of his movies. Oh, Yeah. Wow. And she kissed him on the cheek, and then it caused an international scandal. Right. Well, speaking of international scandals... I didn't know if you know this, but sitting across from you is the woman that was voted the second worst dress no. <laughs> at the really? 2017 Grammys. I loved it. <laughs> you look amazing. You so I much, love that shirt. You got, you got so much publicity from that. Yes. I mean, that's what you have to do at the Grammys anyway. If you, Unless you're a really big star. And you, then you can dress really, you know, pretty and, and whatever. And then, Old school Hollywood and, glamour. Yeah, yeah. But I, and it's also, you know, it's And the then Grammys. that CeeLo... For taking the number one CeeLo, spot. Yeah, I was CeeLo. I think Lady Gaga. I was in good company. Well, no, you were, CeeLo was number one. You were number two. I was number two, yeah. I think Lady Gaga was number three. Yeah. But uh, Or maybe Girl Crush was up there. Yeah. But <laughs> I, it described your dress. I love it. Oh, the CD dress or the oh, vampire the, the dress? Like, I, I like the vampire dress. <laughs> but the CD dress is what really got your attention. The CD dress, yeah. You made a um, dress out of CDs. Yeah. It was, oh, it was wow. like lace and then CDs put on it. Um, Andre Soriano, the designer. Yes, I, I yeah. know. I've met him before. He's yeah. a character. Yes, he is. And so he's been my clothing guy, my dress guy for the Grammys yes. for the past two times I've been, you know. And, and you, were, so, you, you didn't go to 2018? I did not go. It was in New York, and I just couldn't make it for that one. Oh, yeah. Okay, and yeah. you love New York. I do love New York. I know, but it was kind of crazy because it was smaller, yeah. so it was really you have to be really like on point with everything. Like, right. I kind of missed the boat on that. Well, I like the vampire. Obviously, I yeah, like the vampire yeah, dress. Fun. And then the, the CD dress, I could see. Now, was that a um, was that a statement about the disposal? Exactly. Disposability. Exactly. Of you know, it's like music. how the music industry changes and how it's become pretty much obsolete. You know. I mean, you really entered the music industry right when it died. Yeah, yeah. How does that feel? You know, I think it didn't die. I think it's it's better than it's ever been, in the sense well, that. Well, it's not as lucrative as it was. Well, I think For it artists. is. You but think more, so? I think it more is. exposure too. Well, maybe? because you have all the gates are open now. You know, yeah. there's no more the big players and and they control everything. You can reach out to any music supervisor, to any music like library, right. to get your music placed. You know, licensing is the new A and R, really. Yeah. You know, getting your songs placed. Well, in that's the, TV the radio. Show. You know exactly. You know, so I think it's better now because you have Instagram, you have YouTube, you right. have Snapchat. Yeah. You know, you have all these platforms that you can really just go and build your audience. Because my you know? my theory has always been that's why everybody's doing comedy now. Because a lot of people that would have formed punk bands and indie bands, they're doing comedy now. I think I think it's so much harder. I so it's, yeah. so much, it's way harder, but well, you know? depends. I can't sing with, with the shit, but but you've been solo for how how long? Um, since actually 2013. Right. But I've been focusing mainly in the studio on TV music, so I've been doing right. a lot of instrumental music oh, for nice. the, for music libraries and stuff like that. Well, see, I was on the way here, and actually uh, all day today and yesterday, I was because uh, uh, I was on title, and I was. Going back and forth between your solo stuff and Otto's daughter mm -hmm. it was very schizophrenic. Uh, really? Pilot. It's because it, it, uh, you're not you're not drenching yourself in blood.